Looks like the Xbox servers are back online. Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome to the next episode of Franchise Mode. Who wants to go to the zoo when it's pouring outside? Maybe we should use that as inspiration. What if today we make an exhibit that's more indoors with a lot of overhead cover from guests? That way, if it's raining or snowing, maybe they can have some place they can still enjoy. I think that's a good idea. But before we start on anything new, let's do a wellness check on all of our animals. Our sea lions probably like the rain the most. Realistically, if they're underwater, they won't even be affected by it. For some reason, I feel like they always get stuck here. I might drain the water later and just redo this little slope, because this is not normal behavior. Neither is that. This game usually runs so well, so when something weird happens, it's truly shocking. And of course, as soon as I turn away, this one gets out of the rocks and is playing with the soccer ball. Wish I could have seen that. Luckily, the sea lions seem fine and unbothered. The flamingos appear to be alright, too. I'm sure the caimans are enjoying it. The Amazon is a rainforest, after all, so they probably feel just at home. In case you haven't met him before, and if this is your first episode of the series, this is Jose, our first albino in the zoo, and my first ever in this game. He may not have the best stats, but he's happy and can reproduce, and that's all that matters. Our cappies have been indisposable in getting us a lot of conservation credits and money early on. I credit them for a majority of the zoo's success so far. We have over three times the amount of money as we started with, so I'd say the zoo is officially self-sustaining and profitable. Now we can get some crazier animals in here and do some more expansive projects. Another goal I have is getting more highly rated animals, like our gold-starred caiman here. <laughs> Lastly on the checklist, I believe our tortoises are about to mate, if not already expecting offspring. Now where are they? There's only two of them in this relatively large exhibit. There they are. Let's check. Yep, offspring do. That's good. I think this is the only animal that we have that hasn't given birth yet. I doubt they'll sell for much, but still, conservation and awareness is helpful, especially for an endangered species. Since the channel has been getting more and more traffic lately, thanks to some very generous shoutouts from the YouTuber Iron Maddie, we have actually been getting a lot more requests of different animals in the comments. I read every single comment and really appreciate feedback. But the one comment that I've seen that really stuck out was somebody wanting us to add African elephants into the zoo, which I entirely agree with. If we ever see a good deal in the animal market on some African elephants, particularly a male and a female, we'll jump on that as soon as we can. We have enough conservation credits to get some from relatively cheap. But for now, let's just keep getting up some animals for cash. Those African wild dogs were a good deal. Male and a female. Not seeing anything else that sticks... Hmm. Maybe hippos could be nice. We have a pretty good aquatic theme and semi-aquatic theme in this zoo already, so I don't really want to overdo it, but seeing as that we have a relatively large plane set out for our African exhibits, I feel like you can't really miss hippos. If you just saw their range, it goes all over Africa, but they don't really dominate any specific place. This one is really cheap, too. For only 150 and it has mediocre stats, could be a lot worse, but for 150 I don't think we're going to do much better. Let's pick him up. I'm sure we'll find a different female later. We have a really good inventory of animals, including a lot from North America and Africa. But today we're going to be focusing on these four. Ringtail lemurs. We're going to build them a nice indoor exhibit, and then have an overhang to where guests can comfortably watch them without being in the heat or the elements if it's raining. We have this nice plot of land next to what's inevitably going to be a food court on the back of those bleachers, and I'm thinking we're going to do it here. I want to kind of add curved glass and make an interesting shape out of it first. Ringtail lemurs live in Madagascar, which is probably closer to the Amazon in terms of its plant life than it is the plains of Africa, so we want this exhibit to look really different than the flamingos, but not stand out too much to where it looks like it should be over with our caimans and our cappies. First thing we should do is get rid of all the long grass. This is one of my first cracks at a completely original build. We'll talk more about the animals that are going inside of it once we start decorating it, but for now I just want to get the exterior finished, and go over exactly how I'm doing it. I'm working on the front right now, 
And what I had envisioned is that the front would be entirely made of glass, and the glass would run along these curves and go straight back. So it would almost look like a V or a W type shape. And then the back wall is going to be made of wood, so the lemurs can still climb on it. The reason that we have these curved sections is because the build is going to be relatively square, but the guests are going to be able to have a small indoor portion, and then we'll cover it with rocks and different foliage to make it look like little caves. Ringtail lemurs are by far the smallest animal that we've dealt with so far, so they don't need a ton of space. This would probably suit a family of five or six of them if I had to imagine. Lemurs are also the first animals that we need that are going to require climbing space, and what climbing space is, is trees, or any material that's under the habitat section that specifically says it's for climbing. They only need 20 square units of it, and this exhibit, for example, is probably about 300 square units. I forget if I have meters or feet on. I'm just gonna say units to keep it simple. Climbing is easy because instead of making the exhibits bigger, you can just simply make them taller. Especially since this exhibit's gonna have an indoor portion, we could afford to make these walls really tall. Lastly, to avoid kids slamming into the glass and scaring the lemurs, we're going to add a small protective barrier in front of the glass so you can't directly touch it. A good way to judge how tall your builds are, since you can't really go into POV mode to my knowledge, is to take one of the preset blueprints and put it into your exhibit. If you like how it looks in there, then maybe raise the walls around it like I did. I think I got this one by researching. I definitely didn't download it, and it says it's specifically designed for lemurs, so this one should be good for the exhibit. We just had to raise the walls a little bit. While building this, it dawned on me that I've never actually made a climbing area before, so I decided to keep this thing in here and just build off of it. So I have one already preset, so I know it'll work, and then I'll add my own design on kind of the left side of it. This was also my first time freestyle building off of the grid. I've used the grid before while adding walls and stuff to other various buildings around the zoo, like adding the wood trims to the information center and Cappy Cafe, but this was a little bit different. Since this is an odd shape, there's a lot of overhang. One thing that I've learned while playing games like Minecraft or this Planet Zoo is that builds don't necessarily have to be perfect, if you can hide the imperfections. For example, on this build, some of the glass hangs over the edge a little bit. But to fix that, later on we're going to go over with some big oak logs and fix it by hiding the glass inside of the logs. You have so much creative freedom in this game, it's really easy to make builds that look good. The trick to building in any sandbox game is to think outside of the box. And in Planet Zoo, you have thousands upon thousands of tools. Just keep looking around and eventually you'll find something that's exactly like you need. And if not, just build exactly what you need from other block materials. There's absolutely no shame in using blueprints, especially when you're just starting out. But try not to only use blueprints. If you're in a similar place to myself, try starting with this blueprint, but building off of it. That way, you have something that you guaranteed looks good, but then you can try your own personal spin on things. The idea behind what I'm building now is I want an area where the lemurs can get up really close to the glass. I want this to then lead to where they're going to eat, which is going to be in the center of their exhibit. While the pre-built blueprint is a pretty intricate build, and they have a lot of areas where they can potentially fall off, since this leads to their food source, I want this to be extremely easy for all lemurs to reach, including if they ever have babies. That way, this will be really easy and sort of a beginner course connected to the harder one. But let's talk about our lemur friends. Ringtail lemurs call the island of Madagascar home. It's off the eastern coast of Africa. Despite being one of the largest islands in the world, the only ones I can think of that are bigger off the top of my head would be Australia and Greenland, Ringtail lemurs are incredibly endangered. There's only about 2,000 of them left in the wild. Lemurs are primates, and like other primates, they are extremely intelligent. They're able to coordinate large groups and are very social animals. One trait most primates share is being physically strong and imposing, 
Think about like gorillas and orangutans. They're large animals that can deal some serious damage if provoked. Lemurs aren't like this, and they don't have really any intimidating properties to scare away attackers. Lemurs need to rely on their agility to escape danger. Alright, the exhibit should be close to being done now. We haven't detailed it up with plants, but it should be safe to where they can't escape. They can climb up the wood on the back side, but there's a hard roof above it, so they shouldn't be able to slip through. I made sure of that. We should have four ring-tailed lemurs in here ready to be rehomed. Two females and two males, and hopefully they can have lots of babies. I don't know if we're going to add the other two lemur species in here yet. This exhibit's not the biggest. The only way I could see that happening is if we somehow moved behind it, and then had an entire district of lemurs. The Zoopedia says they can all cohabitate with each other, but the other two I don't believe are native to Madagascar. But I could be wrong, I'll check that on my own time. But for now this is just going to be ring-tailed lemurs. The exhibit obviously isn't quite done yet. It still has a lot of room to be detailed up. The reason I'm bringing the lemurs in now is to see if they have enough space and like it as it is. Details are technically less important. Despite being catching to the eye and what you really want to make the zoo pop, animal safety comes first. And this goes especially true for endangered species like lemurs. Lemurs might even be critically endangered. 2,000 in the wild is not a lot of them. Welcome home, hope you enjoy it. Now let's pause time. We forgot to do a few crucial things before letting the lemurs inside their new exhibit. For one, we need to get education boards set up. That shouldn't be very hard. We've done this a hundred times. I don't know if it's a bug or what, but in the last episode, we couldn't use this blueprint that has this speaker and screen built into it at the same time, so we had to keep duplicating them from other ones we've already placed. I don't know what's wrong with that. The only problem is whatever we duplicate it from, we're going to eventually have to change, and we might forget. If you duplicate the one that has the flamingos on it, as you can see, it still has the flamingos on it, and it doesn't just reset. It's an easy fix, but I feel like eventually we're going to forget, and that's going to be bad. All we have to do is change the education on each. It won't be that hard. Now that this exhibit is profitable, we should probably make sure they can't escape. If you see the green, which we've never noticed before, I believe that's where they can climb. So just in case you want to test if your exhibit's climbable for a bigger animal, lemurs can pretty much climb everywhere, but if, say, this was an exhibit for, like, a cougar or something, which can still climb, but might be able to escape and kill your guest, you don't want green very high. Like I said before, lemurs live in the rainforests of Madagascar, so this is going to be relatively comparable to the Amazon section we've been working on, except with different types of plants. Less Amazon lily pads, more African palms and stuff. Unlike our reptiles, which we've been working with, primates are a type of mammal, and they're probably the mammal that needs the most enrichment. As mentioned, they're extremely intelligent. Matter of fact, they're so intelligent that they've actually passed the reflection test. If you don't know what the reflection test is, putting it simply, if an animal is aware of its own reflection and doesn't think it's looking at another animal, it is among the top 1% of intelligent species on Earth. If you have a dog or a cat at home, try it out. If you've ever seen them looking into a fireplace at their own reflection, or some other area at home where they can do it, that's probably what they've been trying to do. Usually, besides primates, only aquatic mammals are capable of doing this. Things like orcas, beluga whales, and dolphins, which are known to be among the top and most intelligent species on Earth. Other animals like manta rays have actually passed. Their brains are incredibly large, despite being a fish. There's actually a nod to this in the game. We put it in the lemur exhibit later on, matter of fact. I forget exactly what it's called, but it's like a mirror mobile or something but that's what it's trying to do. Typically the primates in this game like it, like your gorillas and orangutans. It stimulates their intelligence because they know exactly what they're looking at. What I'm working on now are the slight little overhangs. They didn't turn out exactly how I wanted them. Remember, the beginning goal of this exhibit was to have an area where guests could be completely inside. 
but I think this turned out even better than I could have imagined. I really like how the roof turned out, and using these logs as supports made it look all the more natural. Especially since the glass technically isn't even and overhangs a little bit more, you can't even tell now that the wood's here as supports. I don't know if I was entirely clear when I said earlier that you don't want your exhibits to look perfect. What I meant to say was you don't want them to look perfect in the middle of making them. You want your builds to look perfect at the end, after all of the details have been placed. No matter what you're doing, whether it's a game, a job, school, or whatever it could be, try not to get discouraged until the job is done. In most things, the middle product isn't going to look as good as the end. The end product is realistically all that matters most of the time. The point of building is that the middle you want to have the basic foundation shaped. What you're trying to do now towards the end is make details. Details are what makes your build look good. There's two types of details to me. There's more fine details, like the concrete you've placed on the bottom, and then there's details that make your build really pop. I don't know what you would call each of these, but this is more of like a highlight. You don't really have to have it to make the build look good, but it looks better that it's there. Details like the fence, you kind of need it, because it fills a crucial role of this exhibit and it breaks up the color scheme. But this, you could take it away, but I wouldn't want to do it. I really like how it turned out. When coming to the African section of this zoo, there should be no question where the ring-tailed lemurs are. The only thing we have left to do now is add some more plant life to the outside of the build. I'm thinking we're going to use a lot of moss and ivy. This way, since it's on top of the glass, it'll simulate the forest canopy that the lemurs call home. The sun won't just be beating down on them now. It'll be like in their home habitat of Madagascar. This exhibit turned out better than I possibly could have imagined. For a first attempt at doing something indoors, I think I knocked it out of the park, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. There's probably far better exhibits out there online, but I'm really happy with this one for a first attempt. I can only get better, hopefully. All that's left to do now is make sure the build looks good from all angles. The area that we've neglected to work on so far have been the curved sides, just because it's a more awkward shape. All that we're going to do here is replace it with some rocks and add some plant life in the back. Alright, and they should be extremely happy right now. And it looks like they are. I wonder what's bothering them though. Is there a plant? Oh, they don't like the ivy. That's odd. I put it on the outside of the exhibit because I didn't think they would like it. It's not detracting too much though, and I think it looks really nice in this build, so I'm going to keep it the way it is. If they start really hating it, we'll change it later, but there's no African ivy to my knowledge. This exhibit turned out really nice. The only thing that I don't like is that it's not really open to expansion. It's kind of its own thing, and there's two more species of lemurs that we can eventually add. But that'll be a later problem. One species is enough for now. Look how cute they are. Just like King Julian from Madagascar. It would be cool if you could rename animals and some of them had easter eggs, sort of like the dinner bone thing from Minecraft. Wait, animal has escaped? I thought we checked. Where could he possibly be? It is a lemur, right? How did you get out there? Well, this isn't good. Where is your traversable area? Well, I guess out here it would be everywhere, so we need to get him back. I've never had this happen before. How do you get an animal to come back in the exhibit? Why is he going over there? That was close. He's about to mess up that trash can. It only cost a thousand. That could be kind of devastating if it happened early on. Let's check you, though. Where are your traversable areas? I don't see anywhere he possibly could have escaped. Huh? 
It looks like they can burrow under somehow, but only in this one particular section. We should be able to fix that by putting a rock down. I don't think that's the end of the world. At least they can't get above the exhibit. That would be a problem. I'd imagine that climbing animals are a little bit more tricky to program, so I'm not too upset about this. I'm just glad it was only this one area that was a little bit exposed. If it was the whole exhibit, that would be a problem. We'd have to compromise a little bit of the detail to make it more functional, so I'm glad we only had to do that in one tiny area that's on a staff path, so the public won't even see it. We'll just throw some rocks down back here. It shouldn't be much of an effort to fix this. If anything, it'll get rid of the grass and we don't have to do something crazy complicated back here. Staff paths don't have to be the most detailed things ever. Staff happiness doesn't really correlate to how good the animals are doing. Just what their scenery can be like. And if they have a staff herb available. We haven't really gotten to see the lemurs act yet. Doesn't look like they can get out anymore. Let's just watch them hang out and see what they do for a little bit. They've got their water trough, they've got their food. They should be more than happy in here. Look at them climb. It's so cool how you can make your own climbing structures in this game. Even if it is a little bit buggy. The animations are so cute though. In case you were curious in how I make my thumbnails, I pretty much take a photogenic area of the zoo and take an Xbox screenshot. It's really not that hard. Then you just cut out some lemurs or whatever animal you built, put it in the screenshot, and then you're good. You got a thumbnail. I'm thinking this is going to be the end of the video for today, though. I'm really happy of how this exhibit turned out. I think it looks really nice, and we finally have a variety of exhibits. We have a lot of outdoor, now we have an indoor one. Not sure what we'll do in the next episode. Probably tackle this little area out here of the food court and the bleachers. It looks a little bit empty now that we have an exhibit out here, but I'm not sure what'll be there. That's a later problem, though. Kingpin out for now. See you in the next one.